Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video comes from some requests out in the field where people have been asking for us to show how to do 3D programming in the Prototrack. Now I'm using the RMX for this, but it's the same really if you're in an SX or any of our other three-axis machines. For some reason, people don't think we can program in three-axis. I think that's a misunderstanding, um, but just so you know, I'm going to show how to do it. So the process I'm going to show is exactly what you're seeing in the Verify screen right now which is going to uh, have two million events with an arc in between them and show how to actually take that events and turn it into a complete process that will machine the whole top of the part. As you can see in the vise right here, I have the completed part that makes it easier for the video crew. I don't have to throw chips all over the place, but you'll definitely get the idea on how we made it. So why don't we get started here? Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push exit to get out of the verify screen. Then I'm gonna go to the program mode. And in the program mode, you can see right here is the full 3D part of it but I'm gonna erase most of it so that you see how I actually made it, okay? So what I'm going to do is first of all, cover my first event here. You'll see that I've got a three inch by three inch block and I've got zero, zero in the center, right? So I'm gonna start basically two inches off because I have a ball nose end mill that's of one inch in diameter and I wanna make sure that I can come down in the air and then do all the cutting, all right? Now, the other thing that I wanna explain is I'm also starting off of the part. So you see here that I'm at one and seven eighths. That's so I'm far enough off that I can start to cut in with the just the ball of the end mill each time that it goes back and forth, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to delete every other event that's in my program, like so. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm actually gonna change this to the XZ plane. So all I've got is a line here, okay? And you'll see right where I started. So I'm, one thing I wanna point out, whenever I'm using three axis, it's always going to assume that I'm using a bed, bed nose end, a ball nose end mill. Okay, and so it's also gonna assume that I'm gonna do this with the tool on center. All right, so you'll see in here that I'm using a surface footage of 1300 and I've got my uh, feed speeds both in Z and X, Y, and Z at 20 thousandths per chip, uh, per tooth, okay? So now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swipe forward and I'm just gonna select an arc. So this is the first thing about 3D programming. I can't use profile because I only get to answer the Z question once. Okay, so in here I've got an arc and you know, whether I do an arc or a milling event, after the very first event is programmed, I'm always gonna start out with four incremental sets. That's saying, hey, I want this next piece to start exactly where the last one ended. Okay, now it's asking where my X is ending on the other side. It's gonna end at one inch absolute. My Y is gonna stay at the minus uh, one, whoops, I'm sorry, minus 1.875. Okay, and my Z end is going to stay the same. Okay, so I'm just gonna use ink set and the center of my arc is gonna be zero. My Y center is going to be ink set and my Z center is going to also be uh, minus 1.5. Okay, so it's a partial arc. I've got a con right at the end of five ace. All right, I'm gonna change my tool offset and my direction. So my direction actually is clockwise. That one's correct, but I'm gonna change my tool offset to center and then I'm gonna put in my feeds and speeds, okay? So now right now I'm looking at RPM, so I'm gonna show you by using this that I can change this to surface footage, right? And then I'm also gonna change this from feed per minute to feed per tooth. And that's where I'm gonna put in my 1300. Whoops, gotta close that box. 1300, and then I'm gonna put in my 20 thousandths, okay? And it's also in there, same tool number, okay? So there's the arc part. Lastly, I've got one more milling event. Again, each piece starts out with four incremental sets. Starting where the last one ended off, my X is gonna end up at two inches. I'm not gonna change the Y or the Z axis. There's no Conrad in this case at the end. My tool has to stay on center. And the rest of the answers, again, since I didn't set it up already with it being in surface footage, I have to change them on my events here because they're not really connected until I finish the process. So here you'll see that it fills in the right answers once I change to that. And that gives me my actual surface that I'm trying to cut. The next thing I wanna do is instead of having it pick up and move all the way back over to cut the next line, I'm gonna take this part and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees with an offset of 10,000 so that it can pick up and then come right back the opposite way, okay? The way I did that is I went to copy, I went to rotate, and I told it to copy everything from one to three. And then my X is going to be on center, but my Y is going to be 5,000 short of the first cut, which is gonna leave a 10 thousandths gap between the two. So it's minus 1.865. Okay, I'm rotating it at 180 degrees and I'm gonna do it one time. So if I actually flip this back now and I look at it from a top view, okay, which would be here, you'll see that I've got two lines of, 
of machining. So I'm going across here, moving over and coming back. All right. The last thing that I want to do is I want to come in here and use a subroutine and I'm just going to use repeat. And I'm going to say that I want to repeat everything. So I'm going to go from one to six. All right. There's no offset in the X, but the Y offset, I want to offset by 20 thousandths each time that I do this. Okay. I'm not changing the rapid or the Z endpoint. I need 199 repeats. And then I need to use the same RPM footage and everything else. And you'll see from the top view now that I have a whole square. But if I change this back now and look at it from more of a 3D, you'll see there's the plane that I actually started with. And now I'm going to show you how it'll actually machine it. I have two more things to do. I want to check and make sure that my tool table is correct. Okay. And you'll see that I have my ball nose end mill already inserted in here. And I just put a 50,000 Z modifier in here so that it'll run right across the top of the part without actually cutting anything. Okay. So I'm going to close my tool table. I'm going to switch over to the run mode and then I'm going to push start. Okay. And once it calculates all this, whenever I've got a large amount of repeats or rotations or something like that in the program, it takes it a second to calculate it. You'll see here it says push go when you're ready. So I'm push go. It's going to go home. And I'm not going to run this whole thing, but I'm run enough that you can see how it's going to work. Okay. So as always, I'm going to start my spindle. I'm going to use tracking. I'm just going to dial it down to where I want to begin. So you'll see as I start machining across here that it's just following the contour of the part and it's moving over 10 thousandths each time that I do it. Okay. So now that I know it's working properly, I'm just going to hit stop, CNC, run and go. And let it just continue back and forth. And I'll let it go a few times and then I'll stop it so you can hear me better. Okay, so hopefully this clears up some of your questions or misconceptions on how to do three axis work. If I was actually making a part that was fully 3D, I would still be using a CAD CAM system to develop that tool path. But a lot of parts are pretty simple. You just need a dome or you need a surface like this. And I can do that in a matter of minutes just by knowing how to connect my milling events and my arc events together. And then of course, uh, the next thing I'm gonna show you in the video part that follows this is I'm gonna take that same geometry and I'm gonna turn it into a rotation where the finished part ends up being a dome, okay? I'm gonna do it basically the same way, use the exact same geometry, and instead of using the repeat to step it over, I'm gonna use the full rotation to move it around a degree at a time. So you'll catch me in the next video. I hope this is beneficial. See you in the next one. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today I'm here with the customer service department, reminding you that when you guys call in with some sort of an issue, one of these fine people are the ones that answer the phone and help you and get you back on your way to running and making parts. If you like the videos, don't forget to hit the like button. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe, just hit this button over here. And of course, if you'd like to watch the next video that's coming up, just hit the button over here. As always, we appreciate you watching. And most of all, and most importantly, don't forget to keep, keep on, on tracking. tracking.